A Lowy Institute poll has found that only 53% of Australians feel either safe or very safe. A massive decline from around 2005 to 2010 when 90% of us felt safe. Now, why would that be? Could it be that the neo-Marxists who run our education system have spent the last two decades terrifying our children witless about some imaginary climate change Armageddon and brainwashing our children that boys are girls and girls are boys? Could it be that our pusillanimous politicians have refused to fire a single shot in the culture wars being waged on us, on our families and on our proud Australian way of life by the neo-Marxists within the mainstream media? and academia? Could it be that the unabashed Marxists who run communist China have had their eye on us for decades, whilst our politicians and universities have been bought off by Aldi bags and bank accounts stuffed with cash? Could it be that our northern waters have barely a fishing boat in them to protect us from any foes? Could it be that we happily leased our most northern port to our most likely potential military adversary and the most belligerent naval force on the planet? You see, it was Saul Alinsky, the radical neo-Marxist, who figured out that the way to destroy capitalism and Western society was to erode it from within. Alinsky wrote in his Rules for Radicals that, quote, the organizer must first rub raw the resentments of the people of the community, fan the latent hostilities of many of the people to the point of overt expression. And then he went on when, quote, the despair is there. Now it is up to us to go in and rub raw the sores of discontent, galvanize them for radical social change. You see, don't be fooled when people tell you it is conservatives who are fighting the culture wars and obsessed with identity politics. It is the radical left that is relentless and unforgiving in its quest to destroy our traditional families. It's already inflicted massive and possibly irreversible damage to our institutions, institutions of learning. It tears down from every angle the intellectual and legal privileges bestowed upon us by the Enlightenment and wishes to obliterate altogether the material, health, wealth, and prosperity bestowed upon us by industrialization and bountiful energy resources. No wonder people are scared. Most people don't join the dots, but they should join them. The lack of education, the extreme climate alarmism, the pernicious racial division of the indigenous activist movement, the elevation of feelings over facts and rational debate, the irrational hatred of normal working activities, the craven modern mainstream media, the lenient judicial system were all on display in just one incident this week, which I covered here on Monday night. And that was, of course, when climate activist Marley Cooper decided to block the Harbour Tunnel as a protest against climate change. Hi, my name's Marley. I'm 22. I'm currently locked on to a car at the start of the Sydney Harbour Tunnel in protest of the climate destruction that is happening on this continent right now. I'm on Gadigal country. I stand in solidarity with First Nations people all over this continent who have been fighting for the right to protect their country everywhere. Whoa, so we see the immediate conflation of climate activism and indigenous activism that can only be a product of the education system, which insists on inserting climate and indigenous issues into every aspect of these kids learning these days. But next thing you know, Marley Cooper has been charged and released on bail. And before you can say Walid Ali, she's popping up on Channel 10's The Project to be fated like a rock star. The video of you yesterday, it is pretty confronting to watch. It appears like you lock yourself to the steering wheel of a car. What made you take such extreme action? Anxiety about the way that the world is going, a lot of fear about the way that we treat the planet and the fact that there are people who are determined to extract vast numbers of resources from this earth and the implications that that has on all of us, as well as the fact that it is typically 
less privileged people who experience the impact of climate change and climate devastation that is happening here and now. Oh, really? OK, so just a few simple facts. If we go down the route of renewables, that will require a massive assault on the planet to extract the rare earths and minerals required for solar panels, windmills and batteries. Here's Praga U's estimate. To get the same amount of energy from solar and wind that we now get from fossil fuels, we're going to have to massively increase mining by more than 1,000 percent. This isn't speculation, this is physics. Copper, iron ore, silicon, nickel, chromium, zinc, cobalt, lithium, graphite, and rare earth metals like neodymium, we need them all. And then those metals and materials have to be turned into motors, turbine blades, solar panels, batteries, and hundreds of other industrial components. That also takes lots of energy, which requires even more mining. As a World Bank study put it, these green technologies are in fact significantly more material intensive than our current energy mix. Bet Marley didn't learn that at school, but back to Marley on the project. I think that there's a bigger conversation that needs to happen about climate change, and I think that not a lot of people get a chance to speak on national television about this really important situation that impacts all of us, and that I recognise my privilege in this world, and I recognise that I have privilege here talking to you, and I think that that is part of the reason why it is so important that I am here and I am having this conversation, and that we open up a discussion about how we move forward and how we take steps to support our life systems, to support one another, and to ensure that we take climate action because it is so important. Hello. It's so important that I am here having this conversation about opening up a discussion about how we move forward and how we take the next steps because it's so important that we have this discussion. This is meaningless. It is a turgid circular argument and repetitive tautological nonsense that our children are being taught and are parroting. I'm sorry, this young person should be heading to a bright future with a great career and a happy, fulfilling life to look forward to, not drowning in the intellectual sludge of neo-Marxist claptrap. But hey, who needs facts and rational logic when the half-wit hosts on the project care mainly about feelings. But what were you, how are you feeling when you're in your car? Um, you know, you saw that man yelling abuse at you. you. You must have got a sense of what was happening. Well, how are you feeling? I was very nervous. I wasn't sure how things were going to play out. Um, I didn't exactly know how things were going to go. Though I also felt a sense of empowerment in being able to speak out and to speak my own truth and to speak my story. And I'm really grateful to be here now and to be able to have this conversation. Empowered to be on television for nearly five minutes to have a conversation in which Marley literally said nothing other than trite cliches and meaningless slogans. That is what our political, academic and media class have done to an entire generation of millennials. Personally, I believe it is nothing short of intellectual child abuse and it's taking place daily in our kindergartens, our schools and our universities.